Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one I'm going to be showing you how to uh, install and set up the most recent version of Shader Graph, which allows for vertex displacement and, well, many other features, but especially vertex uh, displacement, which is the one I've been wanting the most, which basically means that you can actually like change the uh, mesh with the uh, shader. Normally you can just put effects on top of the mesh, but with this you can actually affect the mesh itself, which is very interesting. And I've been waiting for this a long time because quite a lot of the uh, shader requests people have asked for required this feature, which now they've added. And obviously it's not perfect and there's still other things they can do, but the fact it's here means we can do something and I can start to teach how to do this kind of thing as well. But I'm still kind of quite new to this because it's only come out recently. Um, I mean, obviously you see the updates on here, quite a lot of it was in the last few days, few hours, few like weeks. It's all quite relevant, or quite recent, sorry. Um, so I might not have known about it for a few days, but it's still very new. Now I'm going to show you how to install and set it up because it's not too complicated, but I know some people have problems with it. Um, took me a few like few minutes to figure out what to do. But first of all, what you're going to need is you're going to need to have the newest version of Unity. As far as I know, it only works on the newest version. It's always best if you want to test new features out. Like don't, don't put this into your main game project that you're working on right now. It might break it. It might you know, not work if you just instantly upgrade to the newest version on beta because it's not always stable. So for now, when you're learning this stuff, just do it in a new project so if anything goes wrong, it doesn't matter. So uh, as you see here, I have the normal newest version of Unity, but I also have the beta version here. Wait, the other way around, sorry, this is the beta one. Um, so what you need to do is to get it, if you don't already have it, you click on here and you see beta releases and here's the beta release. Obviously these are all the official ones, but you want to download this, and once you've downloaded it, when you make a new project, it asks you what you want to make. So we'll say, um, let's just say, uh, new uh, shader graph testing. And on here on the version, you want to choose your uh, the one with the B for beta. And then you obviously choose your path, and let's say a lightweight render pipeline, and create. And as that's uh, creating, obviously if you don't have Unity Hub, uh, you can just get it off the Unity website. I will link that in the description as well as the link to here, which is on GitHub. And this is where you download, obviously it's by Unity Technologies. This is where you download the um, like package for Shader Graph and all the new pipeline stuff. So I'll show you how to set that up. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna download it. So, you know, download zip. And you're gonna do this as well. I'll obviously link this to you. Um, and this will go to your, well, most likely your downloads folder. Um, just give it a second. As well as that, um, you have to do some messing around in the files to actually set this up since it's not a um, official kind of release yet. It's not included in the package manager. Um, so what you'll have to do is you'll have to go into the code which basically um, tells Unity like where your packages are and you have to give it the path of these new ones. Now if you've done any like you know messing around with files before you should be fairly familiar with this or if you've ever referenced file locations with the uh, slashes and dots and uh, you know, different file path locations. It shouldn't be shouldn't be too difficult for you. Um, now, when you make a Unity um, like scene game file project project, that's the word. When you make a new project with um, a new version, it'll take a little bit longer to actually uh, set up. And rather than cutting this out, I'll just talk because there's quite a bit to talk about. So obviously, if you want to skip ahead, then just skip ahead. Um, so basically, if you don't know what vertex displacement is, uh, on meshes you have vertices, edges, and faces. If you've ever used Blender or any modeling thing, you'll know about this. And a vertice is basically a point on the mesh, like a actual, a singular point, it'll have a coordinate. And then an edge is what connects two points. And a face is the bit that fills in the gap between edges. So let's say you had a cube, you'll have uh, eight vertices. Uh, you'll have, let me think, four, uh, eight, 12. You'll have 12 edges. Because um, you'll have obviously four on the top, four on the bottom, and four around the sides. And then uh, faces, you'll have six because you'll have one top, bottom, left, right, and then the other two sides on the side. So you have all those different um, values. So obviously you'll have coordinates for the uh, vertices, and then you'll have the um, you'll have somewhere it'll say which vertices do the edges connect to, and then you know which edges make up a face. This is all like data that you don't see very often or really at all. But what we can do with shaders basically is you can move vertices. And if you move a vertice, that'll move where the edge is actually at, which will then move the face. And obviously the face is what you visually see. You don't actually see vertices and edges uh, in your like mesh. You just see the faces, which is made from the edges and vertices. Now, 
Um, I'll get back to that one when I actually show you how to set up a simple one, but here we go. We've got the uh, scriptable render pipeline thing in my download. So first of all, we want to uh, unzip it, so extract. Um, okay, Unity is open now. So when you open your project, you want to set it up just like you would normally. Um, so obviously this is kind of already set up, but because I'm using a test scene, I want to like just delete all the useless stuff in it I don't care about. Um, and then go to file and you want to make a new scene. So new scene and I'll just recreate the uh, pipeline asset to, um, let's just call it test. Um, so now when you go into uh, edit, down to project settings, down to quality, oh, sorry, clicked on the wrong one. I was meant to go down to uh, to graphics. Anyway, uh, yeah, so edit, project, graphics. And we want to drag in this. So now if I create a sphere and go to the game view, let's just make it a bit bigger. And then let's bring it up a bit and bring it towards the camera. So here we go, we've got a sphere now. And we're going to end up making a shader for this. And what we want to do is, as you see here, we've got our file, this uh, pipeline master. If you go inside of it, you'll have all these things. And really, all you need are a few of these com things. So what we want to get is you want to grab shader graph, pipeline lightweight. You don't really need the high definition, but I'm just going to grab it. And the core. Post-processing is obviously only if you want to get the most recent version of post-processing. Add that if you want, but I'm just going to bother with uh, these ones here. So I want you to copy them. So obviously you can keep this folder somewhere so that when you uh, make other projects of it, you want to put these in as well. So you'll copy these and then you'll go and find the file this scene is in. So if I go like, if I just skip around, um, this is called, what do I call it? New shader graph testing. So that's here. And in here, I'm going to dump these new files. So this will take a second. Um, and these files are basically, uh, instead of using package manager to download the like shader graph and stuff, we're actually putting in our own version of shader graph. So obviously, yeah, that'll go in. And here you go, you got these comms. Now, what's that gonna do? Well, you know, it's not gonna, uh, it's not gonna do much. We need to actually tell it to use these files. So if you go into packages, you'll have this thing called manifest and it's a JSON file. You wanna open it in like a text, uh, text editor and here you go you got this one line basically just saying dependencies yeah so this is uh, saying that the only package i've currently got installed is the lightweight render pipeline and that's where it is and that's that's what it's using which obviously makes sense because i made a lightweight render pipeline thing but i didn't add anything now we've got those other files and if you actually go onto the website here and you go down to the explanation there is a thing here saying see this and if you see it basically gives you a thing here which you can just copy and paste Obviously you could type it all out yourself, but if we copy and paste that into here, this is everything we want. We want the core, shader graph, high definition light. Wait. The only thing that we need to change about this is that these are file path locations. So basically this is saying, this is the file and this is where it is. But that might not be right. Cause this is saying, uh, this dot dot slash means go back a file. So if you think about in here, this is where the code is. This is where the manifest is. If I, this says go back, three times, so one, two, three. Oh look, we're all the way, we're all the way out of this. So basically, oh, I should have pressed the up arrow. One, two, three, we're all the way over here. If you think about it, from where this um, file is, okay, so we've got packages manifest. We want to get to these com files, which are one up. So this goes three up. So if you want to go one up, basically just take two dots and two slashes out. And on here, take two dots and two slashes out. And on the next one, uh, sorry, I should have kept that in. Uh, and then the two dots and two slashes. So it should be like dot dot slash and then community render pipeline. So then if you're on here and you went dot dot slash, that would go back one. So up. And then here they all are. So this now basically tells Unity we want to use these uh, files, the community com, blah, blah, blah. And this is where they are. So if we save this file and go back into Unity, it's going to take a minute. I don't know how long it'll actually take um, to say okay here's the files you've got let's import them let's set them up now i will have an error i think a slight error which is saying some of the things are imported wrong you probably won't have this error but i've got some weird problem with my uh like photo opening software just like photos or like uh, media stuff i've got a problem with it where it for some reason unity just doesn't want to open icons so it's going to give me error messages for all the like ui icons for shader graph I'm going to fix that in my own time, but for, for now you shouldn't have this problem, so don't worry. 
Um, but yeah, now when you open Shader Graph, as soon as this is done, uh, assuming you followed everything I've done correctly, if you if, it, if you got problems and you know go back and try again and follow what I do exactly. Otherwise, you can ask questions if you're really stuck. Um, though I have covered the way that I found works, so you know it should work for everyone. So should be very nearly done now. Um, yeah, so there's a lot more features than just um, the vertex displacement. I haven't actually had time to look into it all yet. Obviously, that's what I'm going to be doing over the next few days. Uh, so for tonight, I'm just making this video and I'll show you how to do some simple like mesh deformation with the shader. And then um, in the upcoming videos, I'll try and make the different ones that people want. So for example, the wireframe shader, uh, someone mentioned to me and it was a good idea. I plan on doing that anyway, which was for the wireframe shader, all I did was use a like um, texture, but technically the best way you would make a wireframe shader is by actually getting the vertices and drawing lines between them. Obviously we don't have that capability with shader graph, but maybe we do now with the new version here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and make it. Um, obviously if anyone's got suggestions on how you do anything or what you want to see with the new one, then, you know, go ahead. Um, so if we look back in this uh, text folder, uh, I don't know why, here we go. Um, I actually don't know what this testables bit means. Obviously I know what dependency means because that literally is just self-explanatory. Like here is the file and here's where it is so it can use it. Testables, I don't know. Um, the default like JSON file here doesn't use that. So I'm not sure, maybe someone can let me know. I could just look it up. Maybe it would work without it. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but you can close that now. If you ever added any more, like if you did add post-processing and you put that in here, like com.unity.postprocessing, you would then have to go into here and change it and put the post pro the name and the file location. I'm sure you'd be able to do that if you wanted to. Um, all it is on that website that I'm going to link is just the newest, newest beta versions. Because obviously they're only going to add them if they're the mo if they're stable and working, then they'll add them to the package manager. Um, you got to remember that I'm using a beta version of Unity as well, so it's not like perfect and there'll be like uh, errors of it and like experimental problems and I've noticed it's just generally a bit slower um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should uh, mention in the time before this is like nearly finished obviously there's a lot of files to uh, do it's just the same as if you're using package manager but it's a different version of the shader graph and pipeline stuff um, I guess one thing to mention as well is obviously with these updates coming out by unity adding new features um, that doesn't mean just because this one updates added vertex displacement that it's going to work perfectly and that you can do everything related to it uh, in this update. Obviously, they'll still need to fix things before it comes out for real. But anyway, by the looks of it, it is done. Here we go. This is the thing I was on about, just saying, yep, yeah, I can't do this picture icon for some reason. Just clear that it doesn't matter if you had that. But anyway, here's our sphere. Now, I'm going to show you before we end the video. You've installed it. This should work. So we'll create a new material uh, called like vertex testing and then we'll create a new shader Let's call it like a PBR uh, vertex shader um, I, t I spell it wrong but oh well um, for my sake I've got to spell it right okay we'll apply that to the material as always just make sure the sphere is uh, using it There we go. Let's open it. And you'll notice right away that there should be some differences. Um, it also might be a bit laggy. I've noticed it's a bit laggy. So if you look here now, first of all, this little icon here, the, the exclamation mark here and here, this is because my icons are missing and like the, the images. That shouldn't be the case for you. But as you see, it's a normal specular, metallic, opaque, transparent. It's just moved around a little bit. I don't know. They wanted to do that. Now you look here, we have all the things like normal, but we also have a position, which is a vector free, you know, position, object space. If I just put in a value into here, the object would basically disappear. It just wouldn't work. What we want to do is we want to, by default, the position is object space. So if I put in position, object, put that there. That is just doing the exact same thing as the default value. So if I save this and you'll look, nothing will happen, right? Like the, the thing's still there. But we're going to write a thing quickly. We're going to make a really quick shader, which basically can like change the size and shape of the object. So what we want to do is we want to uh, take this position value and we want to get time and we want to multiply 
uh, sign time, which obviously goes up and down by the position, and put that into position. It is a little bit slow with this. Now, as you see, because the value is going up and down, because it's sign time, as you see, it's actually, because it's going between one and minus one, the object is kind of going inside out. Um, if we went if we went for cosine time, you'd see a slightly different thing. Just give it a second. It's, you have to be patient. You can pretty much tell by looking at this multiply. Um, just let's see what happens when we save. You'll see it in the scene now. This is the uh, simple displacement shader for vertices. So you see the actual shape now. Obviously, it's going inside out. You, you can kind of see when it goes inside out. Like uh, right now, it's inside out. It looks a bit odd. Um, Obviously, that is an effect as well, technically going inside out. The sphere collider doesn't change with the the mesh because obviously, like the shape is, uh, yeah. But we're actually physically changing the mesh of the object now with the shader. This isn't just a like transparency in these outer bits. This is the mesh actually changing, which you know is pretty pretty damn cool. Uh, how now, like we've got our shape here, which looks the shadowing doesn't work when it goes inside out, which is quite funny. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really cool effect. Well, this is this video wasn't meant to show how to make a really cool effect. This was showing what we can do uh, with, well, how to set it up and set something really quick up with position. Obviously, I'm going to be experimenting with this quite a lot in the upcoming days and weeks to make really cool shaders for you guys because I know you, most of you are here for the shaders. Um, but yeah, I think that's the end of this video. So I've shown you how to set it up. If you can't figure it out after watching back, then obviously feel free to ask um, in the description, in the comments, sorry. Um, in the description we have a discord server where, which is a better place to discuss because obviously this is quite new in general to unity it only came out in the last few days um shader graph i'm loving it it's uh you know got me most of my following because uh, people seem to really like this content and there's barely any of it on youtube to be honest which is uh, quite sad because it's new um let's just zoom in a bit there you go thumbnail um and yeah so if i see if you want to see these vertex shaders that are coming up they're going to be a lot more interesting than the ones i've done so far uh, obviously subscribing and leaving a like would be nice uh, those of you on the unity subreddit probably want to know how to do this kind of stuff I've had quite a lot of comments of people asking about it and now it's finally here so you know this is the just the setup and introduction video for it uh, I need to still learn over the next few days what kind of effects I can do and how to do them but in general with shaders you can make any effect you want if you know what you're doing so it's always good to experiment yourself I recommend you you know trying around with like things just doing whatever um, but yeah, so if you like this kind of uh, content, then obviously stick around, subscribing, liking, commenting what you want to see more of. Uh, Unity in general, I want ideas of what kind of Unity videos, what kind of series people want to see, like, you know, whether you want me to, like, review games that are already made in Unity and discuss just game making stuff in general, or whether you want me to actually, like, do tutorials on how to make simple games or whatever, or maybe make clones of already famous games like... Um, I've seen, obviously everyone here probably watches Brackies because he's like the biggest Unity channel. He's got me into Unity. Um, he does kind of videos every so often. It's like how to make a Flappy Bird clone or how to make a Line Rider clone, whatever it is, or how to make a Cut the Rope clone or whatever. They're actually quite interesting, showing you how you would make a game that's already like popular and simple. Um, but yeah, I think I've blabbered on enough. Um, if any of you are still here, <laughs> hi. Um, yeah, so if you've enjoyed the video, then obviously all the stuff before, I don't want to sit here just asking for subs and likes and all that lot. I'm, you know, the, the main thing about getting more subscribers is uh, it helps me know that people actually like seeing the content and want to see more of it. And it, it does encourage me to make more content. Like whenever I get the, you know, nice comments and the uh, questions, I always love like helping people out and hopefully trying to answer their questions as well as I can. But yeah, so if you like the video, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to say it again. Thanks for watching and goodbye.